Grizz Nation, welcome back. Happy early Thanksgiving. The Grizzlies are taking on the Houston Rockets. And I think this was probably a game that was circled by a whole lot of people, a whole <laughs> lot of the players. Joining me to break this one down today is Vanessa Richardson. Are you as excited as I am for tonight's game? I am. I mean, just the storylines. Obviously, Dylan is the big story here and, and former teams. Anytime you have somebody with a lot of history, but it's also just these are two teams that you know, in the past have been what they've been, but are trying to like mm -hmm. turn a new chapter. And so I think it's exciting. And then, you know, you couple the fact that we lost three on the road. And so now we're trying to come home. Um, yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot to it and I'm, I'm pumped. Okay. Yes. So as she mentioned, the Rockets are coming off three straight losses. Those ones are all on the West coast. Yeah. The Grizzlies are coming off a loss, a very close loss that mm -hmm. they had two opportunities to actually tie the game, but a close loss to the best team in the league right now in the Celtics on Sunday. This one tips off at 7 p.m. Central time here. Let's kind of break this one down. Why don't we just start with the obvious? Why don't we start with Dylan Brooks? Uh, I love it. We're playing six seasons here um, in Memphis. He's now with his new team with the Rockets and playing phenomenally. He is averaging 14 points a game. He's shooting 50% from the field, 50% from three point and still that defensive minded guy that the Grizzlies loved so much when he was here. What have you liked from him? <laughs> well, everything. I mean, we'll start with the fact that, you know, pe people and national media, everybody can say what they say, but you know, you and other people in Memphis have told me that he was great and surely, you know, sure enough, he's been great. So off the court, I've been very impressed. Um, his work ethic, how early he comes in, all of that. I see why he's been, kind of as successful as he's been and on the court we knew we were getting the defense like which is great but to get all of the offense and and for it to be so efficient like is wild and I think it's coming somewhat from team Canada like I'm sure you watch team Canada not only because you know Dylan but Miss Canada over here he really found his shot this summer with team Canada and he hasn't lost it so it's not only that he's shooting, it's that he's shooting well and adding that offensive bolster when needed. So, I mean, you're talking about somebody that is defense, which we knew, offensive punch, and then he's a veteran. The young guys love him and they listen to him. So to me, it's like all around player, you know, would almost be the term I'd use with him so far for Houston. Uh, there's two other guys that I do want to talk about, even though I could talk about Dylan. For like 10 minutes. Uh, this is me coming to you as I've watched probably half of your games. I would say, yeah, I've been so impressed with Alperin Shangun mm -hmm. and he does 20 points a game shooting what 68% from the field. Unbelievable. Insane. <laughs> uh, and then also the other guy is Fred Van Vliet. And I think, yeah. uh, I know Fred well, just from his time mm -hmm. in Toronto. I want to know what he's brought to this team because it's a very different look than last year. I want to know what he's brought to this team. And then also Alperin, how incredible has it been watching him? Oh, well, we'll start with, we'll start with Alperin. Alperin versus Jaron is, is something that I'm highly, highly anticipating for tonight. Um, it's, it's his third year. And for Alpi, he was not happy with his performance last year. And he was vocal about that. He didn't like the way he played defense. Um, and so what Ime Udoka did, and, and Coach Udoka told me this, is he and his coaching staff intentionally got Alperin Shangun out of his comfort zone this summer, like on purpose. So the preseason, Alpi didn't look like he was in sync. And what fans, and it's not their fault, they have no way of knowing, but that was calculated, right? So now Alpi feels empowered and we're seeing this side of him and people, you know, jokingly calling him like Turk Nowitzki or baby Joker, which has kind of been his nickname to see him take control of the game. And especially like our last game against the Warriors, he wasn't even feeling well, like he was possibly not going to play. And he dropped like, I don't remember the exact stat line, like 30 or something like that. I mean, he had an insane game when he wasn't even feeling a hundred percent. So to watch that growth has been really, really cool, kind of to watch it in real time. Um, and then with Fred, the proverbial leader, the proverbial extension of Ime Udoka on the court, you know, Coach Udoka had said, I want 
Fred and Dylan and Jeff Green, like these older guys, to be an extension of me on the court. And I see it in practice. I see it in shoot arounds. Um, him, you know, correcting a young guy when he does something wrong. And the young guys respond, making that eye contact, responding because they respect him so much. Um, so I'm a big fan of Fred. And it's anybody that thinks a culture can't change overnight. And it, that's nothing against our last regime. But anybody who, who thinks that culture can't change overnight, I mean, it's like the minute Fred walked in the door, you know, that's what we've seen from him. Yeah, Fred is is probably the ultimate leader when you talk about just like leadership, especially in that point guard mm -hmm. position. Uh, I'm going to talk about our leader, though, uh, who I mean, I would say is our leader right now is Desmond Bain, not only a Desmond, leader, yeah. points, but he, he is that guy who kind of like leads by example. And, and we've seen that. Yeah. A lot this year. He's averaging 25 points per game right now. Uh, a lot, we call him downhill Des, but a lot of those do come from the three and not from his drives, uh, right. defensively. Who's the stopper? Who's the Des stopper tonight? Who do you think is going to be on him? You know, the thing about, the thing about coach Udoka and what he's implemented is it's a lot of switching and it is a lot of all hands on deck, all effort. So last year, the Rockets were, were last in almost every defensive category. And the coaching staff had no problem reminding the guys of that during training camp, like writing it on the whiteboard. Like, this was your record. This is what you guys were not good at. And this year we've seen a revamped, revamped defense. That's kind of what Ime Udoka is, is known for. And it's not overly shocking since he's from the Greg Popovich tree. Mm -hmm. So I look for our friend Dylan to be very active tonight. Um, and then defensively, Jabari Smith Jr. and Jalen Green have both taken steps. Like Jalen, Jalen even said this to me on media day. He's like, I have not proven that I can be an all-around player yet. I haven't proven I can play defense. I've, so Jalen, although offensively the last couple of games, he has not been what he would want. Defensively, Jalen's taken a step up. And then I think Jabari is taking that seriously too. When Tari Eason and Jay Sean Tate come off the bench, that defensive effort, and you know this as somebody that played, like sometimes those gritty bench guys can, can sh I don't want to say shut somebody down. I have more respect for Des than that, but like, but they can really make an impact. So um, I'm excited, and he's somebody that when you watch him play, like I, a, a rough start to the season doesn't mean that you're not going to have players emerge and eventually make a difference. Mm -hmm. you know, we're not even talking about when Jaw comes back. So mm -hmm. I think Desmond, other than the obvious Jer Jaron, I mean, Desmond is like somebody to watch tonight and I'm super excited. Yeah, for sure. Uh, my last question for you, and this, this is kind of, I guess, a question for both of us and maybe we'll talk. Yeah. Through it. Uh, both these teams are in the bottom five in the league and points per game. And we're talking yeah. about guys who can score the, the Rockets have five guys in double digits or averaging double digits. The Grizzlies sure. uh, only have three now that Marcus Smart is out. What kind of game do you expect tonight? I don't think it's going to be super high scoring. I think mm -hmm. the defense, uh, the Grizzlies shoot a ton of threes, fourth most in the league. What kind of game do you expect to see tonight? I hate the cliche term physical, <laughs> but I feel like it's going to be super physical and super aggressive. Mm -hmm. And I actually think it would be that way, even if like, for whatever reason, Dylan wasn't playing because of what you just said, low scoring, mm -hmm. um, Alper and Shangun versus Jackson Jr. I mean, you're talking about the reigning defensive player of the year and somebody that these teams are now like, hey, they're, they're going through him. Mm -hmm. So that matchup is going to be insane, I think, in the best way possible. Um, so I think it's going to be aggressive. I think it's going to be physical. I think it's going to be emotional because even though Dylan and these guys are still friends, they have no problem surfing on the court. Um, and it has the potential, I think, to be a lockdown defensive matchup. And I don't hate that. Like, I, I, you know, variety is the spice of life. So I like certain games where people are getting it from behind the three-point line. And then the next game, you're like, is anybody going to score? I think that's fun. So I, it's going to be a good one. I think it's going to be so fun. Yeah. Yeah, I think you went physical. I would have gone physical, too. I, I think it's going to be fun. Like, I think this is going to yeah, be yeah, yeah. a fun game. It doesn't, that doesn't tell anyone about the scoring. It's just me being like, I'm excited. So I hope you are too. Um, Vanessa, thank you so much. We're going to see you, thank you in the next, I guess we'll see you three times, including today in the next like month. So yeah. 
Get yeah. ready, fans. Get used to me, Grind City Media. <laughs>